We could have one of the best Monday Night Football matchups ever, ever, ever. It's the NFC leading Niners hosting the AFC leading Ravens, a matchup of 11 and three teams. It's just the second meeting since the 1970 merger between teams that hold a share of the NFL's best record in week 16 or later. You're welcome. How about Lamar Jackson? He's rolled through the NFC 19 and one in his career against them. Seven straight wins. In fact, he's faced the Niners once and beat them 20 to 17 back in December of 2019. He threw for 105 yards, ran for another hundred. But the Niners have been arguably the hottest team in football, winning six straight games by double digits. That's tied for their longest streak in franchise history. The last time they did that, 93 Christian McCaffrey wasn't born. Here he is on the Ravens defense. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, you know, even even watching them before this week, um, they stand out on tape. They play fast. They play physical, uh, very well-rounded. You know, they can do anything you want them to do. So um, provide a lot of challenges, you know, and we're going to have to go out there and execute. It's, you know, every game is the biggest game of the season. This one. Um, this one's huge. It's, it's no smaller than any other game, no bigger. But um, you do have to go out and execute against this team. You have to have the right mindset. We're preparing just like any other week. You know, preparing to go out there and minimize mistakes, execute, play hard, play fast, and you know, hopefully come out with a win. You know, the season's winding down, which means that every game is impactful, but in particular Monday night, because both teams already have the best chance to earn their respective one seeds, at least according to our analytics, but they can see those chances jump well over 80% with a win. A loss opens the door for other teams to get back in the hunt. Cosplaying as Santa, Mina Kimes is back handing out gifts, like the gift that Lamar Jackson and the Ravens need to beat the Niners on Christmas night. Plenty of runs, which is something the Baltimore Ravens love to do anyways. They love to run the football. But I would argue, Al, that it is uniquely important in this game against a San Francisco 49ers defense that is still very good, but has struggled to stop the run all year long. We just saw that against the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, they rank near the bottom of the NFL in a number of metrics when teams run the ball in between the tackles, using motion, basically doing all the things Baltimore already does. They did lose their young running back, Keaton Mitchell, to injury, but I think the combination of Jack Jackson, Gus Edwards, you see here in Justice Hill, is enough to move the ball on the ground and in doing so, keep the San Francisco 49ers offense, which is a total juggernaut off the field. And maybe for the first time in history, someone asked for the runs on Christmas. Mina Kimes joining us here. We appreciate you. <laughs> Happy holidays to you, Mina. Thank you. All right, here's what to watch for. Coming up in just a couple of minutes here on ESPN, it's the Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl from Tampa, Florida. Georgia Tech seeking its first bowl win since 2016 when the Yellow Jackets take on UCF. Knights appearing in their eighth consecutive bowl game and seeking their seventh straight winning season. That's coming up. What to watch for is brought to you by to be jolly. So we're going to table the petty and highlight the biggest wins of the year. We even changed the graphics so you know that it's real. 2023 huge for women in sports. We saw LSU and Iowa draw record numbers in the national championship before the Tigers took it all. And there was big shots. There was trash talk. There was Kim Mulkey's jackets. Look, we're from Louisiana. We like sparkles, we like diamonds, we like Mardi Gras, we like to eat, and we like to party. Ooh, that's like the Boots Five Commandments. We had another first as well. Coco Gauff becomes the first American teenager since Serena to win the U.S. Open, causing a nationwide allergy reaction. And we saw the epic return of Simone Biles, the AP Female Athlete of the Year, who won U.S. and World Gold in her first competitions after a two-year hiatus. It's incredible. But folks, most importantly, we all witnessed what happens when one little girl is empowered to use her voice. In any particular game, if he steps the wrong way or something, you know, just... And there's DR doing I'll work. Tell you it what. Works. Those scintillating sounds from DeMar DeRozan's daughter, DR, caused the Raptors to miss 18 free throws in their play-in game. With the Bulls back in April, Bulls ended up winning by four. Some um, during the game, then it was one free throw, some, somebody missed, and I looked back and I was like, damn, that's my daughter screaming? Man, she was viral. <laughs> yeah, and let that be a lesson to us all this holiday season, folks. If you really want something and you scream hard enough for it, good things will happen. Unless, of course, my kids are watching, in which case, DR should have used her inside voice, okay? Shh. 
Get no ideas, Eva and Xander. Okay, you will get in trouble. We're not done with the W's. This feels good. Coming up, we're going to put one more bow in the year. The best comebacks we saw in 2023 Sports Center closes things out next. And still ahead, because we're closing things out, Georgia Tech UCF. UCF quarterback John Reese Plumley closing out his final season. Can he get a win in the Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl? Kick about eight minutes from now. The must SC highly highlight for you Miami of Ohio hosting Vermont. So the Red Hawks were down seven with a minute to play. We pick it up 20 seconds left. They're down five Red Hawks on the inbound Hunter corner pocket. It's good. OK, now the Red Hawks within four 13 seconds left. Ipsaro trying to make something happen from the right wing. That's how you make it happen. It's good. Deficit cut to one. Now they're down two. four seconds to play. Long second free throw short Hunter pushes it front court. Off the glass. Oh, and got it at the let's go. Miami of Ohio pulls off the improbable late comeback. They win this one 70 to 69. Incredible. Maybe some heroics from the NBA tonight. Who knows? I mean, we do have a six game slate. Sixers host the Raptors following a 51 point game from Joel and beat the MVP favorites put up 40 points, 10 boards and three straight games and could be the fifth player in NBA history to do so in four straight if he does it tonight. The Nuggets face a net squad on a four game losing streak, which started the last time these two played each other. Nikola Jokic recorded a triple double in the win and he has 10 this season, twice as many as the next closest player. And then there's the Warriors taking on the Wizards 10 ESPN having won six straight home games. It's the Jordan Poole return game back in Golden State for the first time since being traded. Here's his former head coach Steve Kerr speaking about the end of Poole's time there. I hate the way it ended. It just was um, really unfortunate um, how it all played out. Um, you, you, you just wish that things um, could end in a in a more positive note in a more positive way. But it didn't happen that way, um, and all that has been documented. But I can tell you that everybody here looks forward to seeing him, and, and we appreciate him. If you also look forward to seeing it, you can watch it tonight right here on ESPN. Steph and the Warriors hosting those Wizards. Covered starts 10 Eastern right here on ESPN. Continuing with Taking the W Holiday Edition, we reflect on the incredible comebacks in sports this year. On January 2nd, the world witnessed a miracle on Monday Night Football when the Bills medical staff revived Damar Hamlin on the field after a cardiac event. This event was life changing, but it's not the end of my story. And he meant that. Ten months later, there he is, Damar Hamlin, suiting back up for the Bills and continues to support families through his foundation that, by the way, raised $9 million during his recovery. Well, how about this? Moments ago, Liam Hendricks. Free of cancer. Jogs out of the bullpen. Less than five months after being diagnosed. With stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. You guys, he trained through three rounds of chemo and took home comeback player of the year last month. Just remarkable. You know, the absolute picture of perseverance also has to be Texas volleyball star Asia O'Neill, who just secured her second straight national championship for the Longhorns. That's after two open heart surgeries just to keep her in the game that she loves. Asia, by the way, was just drafted number one overall in the Pro Volleyball Federation. And maybe more importantly, she has now lapped her dad, former NBA player Jermaine O'Neal, in the rings department. He also has the shirt and um, we have a little replica ring. So I guess he has the same as me at this point. We can, we can just pretend we want it together. Just amazing. All of these incredible athletes and inspiration to us all especially those of you who may or may not have called out of work last week because you had a pimple. <gasps> okay, in my defense, you guys are mean on social media. It was also like really, okay, whatever. In his first season with Georgia Tech, Haynes King is accounted for 26 passing touchdowns, nine rushing touchdowns. Yellow Jackets facing UCF, that's just moments away. On behalf of everybody here on SportsCenter on this show, we want to wish everybody a happy holiday. Enjoy the rest of the year, and we'll see you next.